low. Come down just a little bit. Okay, that's a lot better. Oh, man. Shimmy, I was shot by Shimmer Clunk of Dush, or Rock of Thumb. Pray for me and my health. My health is um, it's like an accordion effect. Some days are rough, and some days are rougher than others. <clears throat> for your prayers in the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Yeah, some days are rough, like today. Shalom, beloved. Just made you a moderator. Yep. Barak <clears throat> So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. My intent is to move through this fairly quickly. <clears throat> The water. Shalom. Barakatha Yahawa. Barakatha Yahawa Shai. Barakatha Yahawa. Barakatha Yahawa Shai. Call him Laimla Yahawa. Bahashem Yahawa Shai. Bahashem. Rakwakadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahawa. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahawa Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the apostles and elders and great millstone. Coming back at you in another lesson, some comments on on the movie, Leave the World Behind. <clears throat> so there's some talk about this movie that came out on Netflix called Leave the World Behind. And I was surprised to find, I was surprised to find out that Barack and Michelle Obama are the executive producers of the movie. And we know that they are insiders. I won't go into detail, but I want to barely skim the surface of the movie so that I don't create a spoiler alert. But nevertheless, I was listening to the elder out of Dallas, and <clears throat> he went into the movie briefly, and there's a lot of similarities as to what the Bible is prophesying. So by studying the scriptures, we learn that we're going to see an instant replay of the series of events that took place in ancient Egypt. So there's a reason America is called spiritual Sodom in Egypt. And really, when you look at America being spiritual Sodom in Egypt, there's connections to the ancient Greeks that took over Egypt under the Ptolemies or the Ptolemaean dynasty <clears throat> that was in the covered Egypt. And then you had the Seleucids or the Seleucian dynasty northeast of them. And I had to pull out a map to look at it. I think that area now is Syria <clears throat> and parts of Iraq. But anyway, <clears throat> so the same Edomites, now in the video is going to be shadow banned. I said Edomites, so what? So these spirits of these rulers of ancient Egypt are back today. And what makes it more heavy, these are the same spirits that were carried forward 
from ancient Babylon around 586 BC when the Israelites <coughs> came under attack, primarily southern kingdom. And the Israelites were scattered in the captivity. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So the Edomites helped the Babylonians take down the southern kingdom and scatter them into slavery. So when we know that our spirits come back, King David prophesied about this in Psalms 137. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom, O daughter of Babylon. Daughter just means to come after, coming after them. Why you think, Yahweh said, fill ye up the measures of your fathers. So we are the daughter of Zion. So we just came back after our progenitors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the progenitors of the Israelites today. So prophecy must unfold, and the Most High require that which is past, pursuant to Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. So we're moving into an instant replay. Whenever you understand reincarnation, everything falls together. The Bible becomes much more easy to understand. Without understanding reincarnation, it's just like reading a mystery novel, pulling your hair out, tearing pages, stressing out, having panic attacks, sweating bullets. Now the pages are soaking wet. You're like, what the hell is this? So this is why Yahweh Shai said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. <coughs> yep, Brother GMS, truth be told, Shalom Allah, call him like Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, Hashem Kakadash Barakatah, Joel 3 and 19, yep. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. So there is an unpaid invoice that Sleazy E got up from the table and thought he walked away from paying the bill. So the Most High don't accept checks, money orders, cash app, he requires his payment in blood. What Christ? Yeah, okay. So Sleazy E thought he walked away from the table with an unpaid invoice and thought he got away scot-free. Well, the Most High requires that which is past. Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. Why in the world is Prophet Joel talking about Egypt and Edom together? Because they're synonymous with oppressors. Bondage, slave masters, if you will. But in this era, they just lack melanin. But the ancient Egyptian devils, they paid for their crimes. When you look at the modern day Sudanese or the modern inhabitants of Sudanese that were pushed down southward, most of them were pushed out of that land. Real dark skin, Manukbo looking niggas, real tall. Where you think Manuk Bo comes from? But well, he might be a jake. I don't know. <clears throat> With those type of skills. <clears throat> but these ancient Egyptians, real tall and dark skinned. So the ancient Egyptians became nothing. Not known in the street. Nobodies. Brother Gabar Ayash serving Yahabashai, Ecclesiastes 3 and 15 in the NLT. What is happening now? has happened before. And what will happen in the future has happened before because God make the same things happen over and over again. Beautiful. Why? Because our spirits come back in the reincarnation. So when we get into that movie, I'm not going to go into detail, leave the world behind. There are pending threats to take down the U.S. power grid or grid structure. So that's going to be a major takedown 
of the U.S. electrical grid and its communications network. Just like ancient darkness shadowed over ancient Egypt, it's going to shadow over spiritual Sodom in Egypt. See, let's go here. So what has been, the Most High is like, oh, okay, let's go ahead and rewind this movie. Let's bring back the same characters, same wicked, same servants, the prophets, and let's just have an instant replay. But this time, I'm going to turn up the heat, and I'm going to make better the delivery in spiritual Sodom in Egypt than what I did in ancient Egypt. You thought that was something. Wait till you see the great escape from the chariots of the Lord so that his name may be glorified and uplifted and exalted. See, let's go here. <laughs> so they're talking about a major U.S. takedown of the power grid. It's going to Exodus 10, verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. So the darkness in ancient Egypt was so thick, it was described as like you can feel it, is how thick the darkness was. Exodus 10 and 22. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Beautiful. So even the chariots of the Lord put forth a darkness that separated the pursuing army of ancient Egyptian Pharaoh and between the camp of the Israelites. Brother Gabar Ayah, so the Most High wants to flex his muscle, if you will, show his power so that his name may be glorified throughout all the earth. This is why the Edomites were created. This is why the ancient Egyptians were created, to make them a reproach or as an example of how to touch not my anointed, neither do my prophets no harm. So they're going to be made into a reproach, an example, a shameful example. You're going to be like, I told you to leave them alone. Brother Gabar Ayash, serving Yehoshai, Jeremiah 16 and 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. So from North America, the land of the north, and from all the outlying areas we've been scattered, the Most High is going to use Shai to show up and show out. So there's going to be fighting breaking out, just like the movie shows. Why you think the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, because everything here is polluted. This is not our rest. Everything here is corrupt, built on blood, which makes it witchcraft. You living on blood money, then your hands are not washed without being bathed in the blood of the Lamb, this doctrine and coming to repentance, the elect of Israel. <coughs> yup. Brother Ak Aliyah, Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord, to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. So the shadow of darkness covered ancient Egypt. The day of the Lord, the grid is going to be down. There's going to be a lot of bloodshed. Every man for himself. The Bible says a man shall be afraid. So things are always about 10 times worse for women and children. You're going to be salivating for a man of the Lord in that day. All that, I don't need a man, I ain't worried about nothing. And listen, all that's going to be flushed down the toilet, okay? Flushed down the toilet. That Karen-like behavior. 
dark skin with a blonde weave, that's going out the door. Talking about I don't need a man. You thought you can follow Gloria Steinem, that devil that was set up by the CIA to help push the Israelite man out of the house and destroy our families. All that flushed down the toilet. Let's read this again from At Alayah, Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? For the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. So we've been taught to look forward to seeing a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jebus that loves everybody. <coughs> but the devil deceived the whole world. Who's in charge that write the educational pamphlets, the educational books, push the university educational academic agenda, and the agenda that's taught in the theological cemetery schools, Amalek, the small hats, Amos 5 and 19, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. So no one can escape paying back Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai with blood. Blood pays for blood. The spirit is in the blood. So the Most High is getting ready to even the playing field, if you will to bring things back into balance, to restore justice and judgment in the earth. So we cannot escape a payment that we have left unpaid or unsettled. Settling the score, if you will. Amos 5 and 20. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it, so terror is going to consume the land. Imagine being shot at in rapid machine gun fire. I've lived it in the dark, by the way. Boom, boom, boom. You don't know which way is death is coming. Which round got your name on it? Screams in the night. Nothing but terror. So you think this is a game? You wait until terror is all around us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Yea, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So the Most High is going to be a guiding light to his elect. So the land is going to be darkness and not light, filled with terror and death, sickness, coughing, mourning, Okay, deep pain, people screaming from their wounds or being ravaged through the night. This thing is going to be terrible. Let's go here. Let's go to Joshua 24. The book of Joshua chapter 24. Let's go to verse 5. I sent Moses also and Aaron, and I played Egypt according to that which I did among them, and afterward I brought you out. So just like today, <laughs> the Israelites are going to go through great tribulation. The daughter of Babylon, spiritual Sodom in Egypt, is going to be consumed with plagues, massive death, mourning, and sickness, anguish. Suffering and dying slowly out here in these streets. Joshua 24 and 6. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and ye came unto the sea. And the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. So just like martial law troops today, they're going to pursue after the Lord's people. And they're going to be like bloodthirsty hound dogs. I want to get my hands on these Israelites. They told us we're going into slavery. They told us God don't love us. That we are as nothing but likened unto a drop that falleth from a bucket. I want Israelite blood is what I want to appease my anger. So the Lord is going to put a demonic spirit on these nations. Starting with old sleazy E. 
Or you think you're shadow banning the damn videos? Because Sleazy E is hurt through his soul. So the Lord is like, I got you, G. Fear not, my servant, Jacob, and ye men of Israel, for I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. <laughs> Let's go back up here. Yup, Brother Gabari Yash, Zephaniah 1 and 17. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood and their what? And their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Dung is like dog poop scattered across your yard that you haven't picked up in about three months. So these bodies are going to be rotten corpses. The birds are going to be walking around looking like they're about six months pregnant from eating off the flesh of the wicked, especially when Armageddon breaks out. Nothing but death and the stink of corpses and rotten bodies and flesh polluting the land. Why? Because the land is polluted. It is filled with witchcraft, unrighteous decrees, idolatry, bloodshed, lies. Why you think the Bible says woe unto the bloody city? When the Most High says woe, that means that you owe him a debt because blood is on your hands. And he's going to get his payment and his unsettled invoices. Second Ezra 16, verse 72. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. That happened in the movie. So the elite know what's coming down the pipeline. But well, we had an Israelite woman stop by the camp last Saturday. When she saw the 12 tribe sign, she looked at it and then got real angry looking. You see? And then say, all of y'all going to hell. <coughs> no, hell is going to meet you, wicked Eve. Not all our sisters are wicked. There's a remnant of sisters that watch these videos, just like the women that were weeping for Yahweh Shai. There's many of the elect sisters that are back today. But that Eve was wicked as hell that came by the camp. Second Ezra 16 and 72. But they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold. Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. So the Most High is getting ready to polish. He's polishing up his gold right now, the elect. But they're getting ready to shine forth more bright. They're getting ready to glisten and shine. The Most High is going to cause a change to ensue. There's not going to be any more doubt as to who are the Lord's precious elect stones are. The Most High is getting ready to make an instant change. These are they which have come out of great tribulation, which have put on the white robes, new bodies, salvation, deliverance, comes with a change of this corruptible putting on incorruption. So the Most High is going to make a metaphysiological change a new body, a new mind, a new spirit, a new way of thinking. <clears throat> Let's go here. Exodus 24, verse 7. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt and ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season. So outside of the nurturing motherland is the wilderness. So we went from the motherland to Africa and then transited over during the North Atlantic slave trade to the daughter of Babylon, America. See, so we're at in this day, we are yet this day in our captivity in the wilderness outside of the motherland. Let's go from there to Jeremiah, and I'll get ready to close out. Let's read this again. 
So the Lord is getting ready to say, you took the delivery out of ancient. So we, we're going to see the destruction of our enemies. We just read it. The spirit just jumped on me. Tell them about it. We're going to see their destruction. Did not we see the water cover our Egyptian oppressors? <coughs> yes, we did. So now under what appears to be a glass of sea, underneath the bellies of the chariots, seeing the destruction of our enemies, and pursuing UN armies, Moab is coming over here about a thousand a night crossing the borders. And many of these Hamites coming over here. There was a cab driver made a video about a Hamite in the back seat of the taxi cab drive, taxi cab car. And he told the taxi cab driver he's making about 2,000 US dollars per month. And they were putting him up in a hotel. And he said he's waiting to get further orders. Okay, so this man is a hired mercenary or militia man from these other nations, Philistia or the Philistines or the descendants of Ham, Moab, 1,000 Chinese coming over here per day, every night. There's been estimates of upwards of at least a half a million Chinese over here. That's just Chinese. We're not even talking about Ham, Elam, or Elam. See, all hell is getting ready to break loose. The analysts have already deduced that in 90 days without food and water and an electrical grid that's been shut down, over 60% of Americans will perish from in-house fighting. Civil war, food wars, water wars, angry wars because of all of the racial and religious and economic tensions. So the experts estimate that in just 90 days, approximately 60% of the population will perish of civil war, uprisings, hunger, thirst fighting for resources. And in one year, 90% of the population will perish. <laughs> Why you think Yahweh Shai said, somebody post, I think it's Matthew 24, except the Lord has shortened those days. It's either 12, I think it's 12 or 24. So these devils got a sinister plan. So when you only represent less than 1% of the global population, then you have to commit what's called a war of attrition. Somebody put the definition of attrition on the comment board, please. So they're going to wage a war of attrition, slowly diminishing the population. Whether Chazak Ban Yahweh, the Shalom King, Rakatha, Matthew 24 and 22 and except those days should be shortened, there shall be no flesh saved. Let's read it again. <clears throat> Matthew 24 and 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So the elect are back, the servants of the Lord, followed by, by a large remnant of men, women, and children. All hell is getting ready to break loose up in here. <laughs> You're going to see that this is not a game for the Gemara Dhamma. <laughs> Matthew 24 and 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. To this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So the movie is showing this with massive death littering the streets. So this is all about the remnant, the elect. And the elect of the elect represents or is comprised of apostles, elders, prophets, teachers in this institution of higher learning, breaking down words 
breaking down the mysteries of the kingdom, deciphering the key, if you will, that the name leads to salvation. The doctrine helps to secure deliverance out of here, to be washed by pure words of wisdom. So the name and the doctrine provides the keys to salvation and following after the ways of the author and finisher of our faith. So the elect is getting ready to shine bright through the glory of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So the elite is waging a war of attrition. No, not contrition, attrition. My voice is kind of dry, so I probably didn't sound clear. So let's read this attrition. Yep, brother, men of valor. Attrition. And the beloved brother. Yep, let's go ahead and get it. Attrition. The action or process of gradually reducing the strength or effectiveness of someone or something through sustained attack or pressure. So just like what they used in Vietnam, the uh, Vietnamese communists or Viet Cong, Vietnamese communists, they knew that you cannot match the beast or the daughter of Babylon, America, with the other nations in bed with her and beat them force on force. So they fought what's called a guerrilla war or unconventional warfare to level the playing field. Unconventional warfare. There's another term for it. It's called um, irregular warfare or unconditional warfare, guerrilla war, just like what Gad used against the Edomite colonizers. Yeah, hit and run attacks. Exactly. So the elite know damn well they're scared. So they're hiring mercenaries and they're stirring the pot of this racial tension. Yeah, we know racism, racism exists, but they're using propaganda to just make it all about racism, but not telling you that they have the Lord's people into their possession, that they call themselves the chosen and call the Lord's children of Israel Gentiles three-fifths of a man. So they're only giving you little sprinkles of the truth. The devil is not going to ever give you the whole truth. That's why Eve told us last Saturday, y'all are all going to hell. No, your black ass is going to hell. If you don't stop looking to sleazy E as the author and finisher of your faith with damn blonde hair, a blonde wig, and blue eyes that don't belong to you, you're the one that's hellbound, which is destruction, not going somewhere and being pers persecuted by a man wearing red spandex and a big dinner fork. So a lot of Israelites are going to die here that trust in this man and this system. But I noticed she studied the uh, 12 tribes chart. And let's see, slave master, slave master, slave master, no slave master, no slave master, no slave master. I'm pissed. Well, get your ass on then. There's the door. There's the door. Okay? There's the door. All right? So a lot of you Eves, you're going to see that this man don't love you, but gave you a golden retriever and told you that that's your savior. Yeah, she studied the chart and got pissed. There's the door. Brother Gabar Yagash, Jeremiah 51 and 11. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord have raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his device is against Babylon to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. See? So they took the Lord's chosen children into their possession, his temple, and just told us we're black, and that we're three-fifths of a man, or we're the cursed seed of Ham. So it was our lot and our place to be slaves. But this devil has been found out as a liar. But instead of listening to the lessons, you're just noticing your slave master has been omitted from salvation. So your ears are fat or dull of hearing. So you're just waiting to be destroyed by those nuclear missiles. Make bright the arrows. A broken arrow or a 
missing or stolen nuclear warhead is called a broken arrow today. Nuclear missiles. Well, you might get caught up into the civil unrest and the socioeconomic collapse. He might get you in a slower way than when these missiles hit because of your hatred for his word, because you despise this word and trust in oppression. Therefore, this iniquity, your sin, shall be as a breach ready to fall. So you're not leaning on the rock of our salvation. You're leaning on your colonizer because his image runs this system and his face is on the currency. So you're trusting in mammon, what you can't see. You're trusting in what you can see rather than what you cannot see, which our faith helps to lean on the rock of our salvation. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. Let's close out here. <clears throat> so there's going to be a lot of terror in the land. Many angry, disgruntled people looking for food, ammunition, gasoline, water, supplies, weapons, women. Okay, these are going to be just all the savagery is going to come out of a lot of these men. A lot of them are sex deprived, crazy, just mad at every damn body. Okay, they hate the Israelites, they hate every damn body. But they know that the law of this current grid that's in place prevents them from really showing their true inner beast man. All of that is getting ready to be let loose. Imagine no cameras being set up. Well, you can't just pull out your phone, okay, of a rapist or a murderer or a racist. Imagine that. No longer can you dial 1-800, cave men are us. Those services will no longer be available. So when, when this grid breaks down, every man for himself, but the elect are going to be saved. Remember in Revelation 11, it says that their enemies beheld them. So the other nations are going to see the elect get raised up. And they're going to be cursing and blaspheming your Habashai, calling him nigger and all kinds of stuff. And they're going to be cursing the most high. You chose them over us? They're so black. The so-called Negroes and Native Americans and Latinos. Elect. Brother Ariyah Cha'aya. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So that wicked woman that saw us last Saturday, she only sees the caveman on the monetary system, fiat currency, which are nothing in the world but certificates or IOUs. That's not money. Gold and silver is money, woman. So you're trusting in what you can see. Mammon, idolatry. Fiat currency that's getting ready to be worthless. Brother Mashiach Arazaka, Revelation 18 and 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God have remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. So this place is going to be racked and stacked with bodies, okay? When you look at the North Atlantic slave trade, it's been estimated that upwards of 100 million so-called Negroes, that's just the so-called Negroes, perished during that period between 1600 and 1850. That's not even counting the so-called North American Indians. Gad, Reuben, Simeon, the so-called Dominicans, the so-called Puerto Ricans, so-called Latinos. When you add that up together, it's about 1.2 billion people that have perished since the fall of Jerusalem. And they went into Jerusalem with great slaughter. You think David was mugged out when he said, Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. 
O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. So these devils just came right back. The same Greeks and Romans that ruled over northern Africa and Egypt. Spiritual Sodom in Egypt, pursuant to Revelation 11 and 8. Brother Gabar Ayash, Surat 39 and 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So demonic, dark spirits are going to be on many of these men. Everything that moves, that have resources, or that has any pigment, the color of a paper brown bag or darker, is going to be in their crosshairs. They even said that during Hurricane Katrina. Anything the color of a paper bag or darker, take it out. We had Jake swimming to try to get help and relief, okay, and assistance. But Edomites were hiding, popping them off, taking them out with shots. But you think this man loves you, Israelites. So right, 39 and 29, fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance, teeth of wild beasts and scorpion serpents and the sword. Punishing the wicked. Yep, punishing the wicked. Beautiful. So these calamities are brought on by our creator. Yahweh Shin Yahweh Shai. He says, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. And neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So these spirits created for vengeance, these dark demonic spirits, that are going to be roaming the streets were made by him that created them for vengeance. Deliver me, O Lord, from the wicked which is thy sword. Did not King David say that in Psalm 17 and 13? Did he not write, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod, yea, and thy staff, they comfort me. So the doctrinal truth, which his name is the label of, is what's going to steer the elect to salvation. See, let's go here. Psalms 91. <clears throat> the book of Psalms, chapter 91, verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he had known my name. So the elect are going to be brought up into the clouds, the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. So we got to put the pieces together. Thy enemies beheld them in Revelation 11. After destruction or that nuclear missile, that's why in Revelation 11, it says there was a great earthquake and thine enemies beheld them. So the caveman is going to mandate the sea hit or the might be in the midst of massive disorder, chaos, confusion. He's going to make it mandatory for you to get this sea hit or this electronic leash or collar where you cannot eat, you cannot travel, you cannot buy, you cannot sell. You're identified as an enemy combatant without this mark because you don't have the seal of Satan having signed an allegiance to him, the God of the Edomites. So without that seal of Satan, he's going to come after you. <coughs> the water right here of the GMS spiritual art because I got lazy and didn't read it. The GMS spiritual art, Revelation 11 and 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And their enemies beheld them. See? So the elect are going to go up into a fathership of Yahweh Shai. Let's go back to this. Psalms 91 and 15. <coughs> Let's go to 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. 
I will set him on high because he have known my name. So the other nations are going to see the deliverance of Israel. Those that are left of them, just before the impact of these nuclear missiles, remember there's, a, there's going to be about a 30 minute warning of alarms going off, neighbors fighting each other. So there's going to be a little bit of somewhere between 15 to 30 minute warning, incoming, sirens going off. You see? And they're going to see the elect being caught up into the chariot, barely or scarcely being saved, pursuant to 1 Peter 4 and 17, Psalms 91 and 15. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So the elect are going to scarcely be saved. It's going to almost be like perfect timing. The missiles coming in while the elect members are going up. And the Lord is going to say, come, enter thou into my chambers and shut thy doors about thee round about. The chambers of the so-called UFOs for the chariots of the Lord. Elect. When we read Matthew 24, verse 29 through 31. See? Brother Gabar Ayash. Now, let's, let's read this first. See, King David is prophesying again. Psalms 137, verse 9. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. These stones are the nuclear missiles, but some of that, of what's left of them, some of them are literally going to be dashed against the stones, looking like water balloons bursting. If you, ever, you know, if you've ever seen a water balloon burst, so imagine that being a little caveman's, you know, uh, I don't want an algorithm. Anyway, you get the point. <coughs> but, but destruction start with these missiles. But some of that is going to be literal, even during the societal breakdown and entering into the kingdom. Let's read that again. That kind of made me feel good. Psalms 137, verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. Destroy Jerusalem. O daughter of Babylon who are to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. They even took the North American Indian babies and dashed their heads against the stones. So the Lord is going to repay them for their deeds. Yep. Yeah, some of that is going to be literal. But also these nuclear warheads, which is called a payload, are called stones or talents of stone. Yep, Brother Men of Valor. Yeah, let's read this at first. Brother GMS Spiritual Art 144, Isaiah 26 and 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. See, so <clears throat> right at the outset of these missiles, coming to destroy this place. The elect is going to be taken up or ascending into the cloud, the fathership, the indignation, weapons of mass destruction. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. There is no judgment or punishment without the transgression of the Lord's word for their iniquity. But sin, salvation, and or judgment starts with the house of Israel. When these Gurkha troops come in, UN troops mandating the sea hit, a societal economic collapse. Okay, 
the rebellious two-thirds. But the elect are going to scarcely be caught up into the chariot of the Lord. Let's close out here. Brother Ak Alayaf, 2 Peter 3 and 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. That great earthquake in Revelation 11, where the elect is going to miss it as these nuclear warheads are raining down on this place. So only the nuclear missiles could cause the elements to melt with fervent heat and the heaven pass away with a great noise. 2 Peter 3 and 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Speaking words of prophecy, sounding the alarm and blowing the trumpet, warning the elect. So the Lord is getting ready to get the big payback, if you will. He's looking at all these unpaid invoices. What crimes? See? Well, the devil don't think he's got to pay on these crimes, along with the two-thirds that despise his word and forsook his law, his word, despise his ways. So they're going to become the first sacrifices here in the daughter of Babylon when the enemy shall come in like a flood. But the elect is going to be lifted up by a standard while the, simultaneously the fire is raining down on this place, just literally bypassing scarcely the massive burnt offering or holocaust. Galatians 6 and 7, yep, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So somebody's got to pay for these crimes. Brother Allah, Brother Ak Aliyah, 2 Peter 3 and 12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, nuclear destruction. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wisdom of Solomon 1, somewhere around verse 14 or 15 says that for the righteous, there is immortality. The Lord's elect. Yup, brother Tzach von Yehuda. Sirach 33 and 1, there shall no evil happen unto him that feareth the Lord, but in temptation, even again, he will deliver him. So the elect was already selected to, for salvation. Prior selection for salvation. But we have to undergo the furnace of adversity to fulfill Bible prophecy. Lord willing, I'm amongst the Lord's hopeful elect or his elect. Isaiah 24 and 20. The earth shall reel to and from like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. Prepare slaughter for their children that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. So there's not going to be a return of Edom on steroids or a third Roman Empire. When we read Isaiah 14 with understanding, the Luciferians. So only the nuclear warheads can cause the earth to reel to and from like a drunkard. This land is not going to rise again. No more. The end of the show. Or the GMS Spiritual Art 144. Nahum 1 and 3. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. No, God loves everybody. He loves the sinner, but hate the sin. Let's read that again. GMS Spiritual Art 144, Nahum 1 and 3. 
The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. These chariots of the Lord is going to stir up a fiery tempest. It's going to give the appearance of a fiery tornado. Pockets of it zapping the wicked and the two-third Israelites, the rebels. They showed us in that movie, War of the Worlds. The beloved apostle Elder Gabar goes into this a lot. War of the Worlds. So the elite understands certain aspects of prophecy. Brother GMS Spiritual Art 144, Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 15. For righteousness is immortal. So how can the Most High destroy an essence of his Holy Spirit that he has apportioned out to his elect? That's why the elect is going to take on the full blossom or full bloom of the reflection of Yahweh Shai with all power. <laughs> so that Holy Spirit is a protector, an essence of the Heavenly Father that could not be destroyed. That's why for the righteous is immortal in Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 15. So the Lord says, fear not my servant Jacob, I will help thee. So his spirit is upon those that fear him. And when you go into that Holy Spirit, it is a council of angels. The counselors of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, which starts with Yahweh Shai himself or an essence of himself. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Kakadash. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much respect and love to the remnant of the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Climb Yeshua in the bud, the ball. We got next, Lord willing. A rock of thumb. Just comments on the movie, Leave the World Behind. Shalom. A rock of thumb. Shalom.